Hey everyone, welcome to Greybeard's Jewels. Today we bring you part 4 of our 5 part series of haunts and legends from every state. In Las Lunas, New Mexico, you can't miss the beautiful Luna Mansion restaurant because the architecture of the former Otero Luna family home is unlike any other in the area. In exchange for the land their current house was sitting on, the railroad agreed to build the estate for the powerful family. The lady of the house, Josefita, loved her home and took pride in its appearance. Today, patrons of the restaurant may not come just for the delicious food and drinks, but for a chance to see one of the establishment's resident ghosts as well. Josefita herself still likes to keep an eye on things and is often seen on the stairs or watching the going-ons from a rocker on the second story landing. Though she's been seen often, she doesn't really interact with anyone. But on the other hand, you've got Cruz. He is the friendly spirit of a former groundskeeper that loves interacting with everyone and especially delights in playing practical jokes. When it opened in 1911, Letchworth Village was a state-of-the-art, groundbreaking asylum community set on a sprawling 2,000-acre campus. Though there were many medical buildings and dormitories throughout the beautiful, serene setting, it soon became overcrowded and conditions went downhill fast. Today the site is abandoned and crumbling and the area is rife with spirits. Loud footsteps, disembodied whispers, giggling, clanging, banging, and all sorts of other paranormal activity have been reported by curious visitors. The Montauk Project was allegedly a set of government experiments that were conducted at Camp Hero or Montauk Air Force Base back in the 80s. Supposedly, they experimented on children and others against their will for the purpose of discovering psychological warfare tactics and figuring out the possibilities of time travel. The Netflix series Stranger Things was inspired by stories surrounding the experiments. Not only is the Biltmore Estate the largest private home ever built, but the gorgeous architectural masterpiece is also quite haunted as well. As they were together in life, so too are they in death. The spirits of both George Vanderbilt II and his wife Edith have both been seen and heard by staff and visitors to the Biltmore. The sounds of parties passed and happy laughter echo the halls, and the duo has been spotted together in various rooms. They are often heard in the library, whether together or just Edith looking for George. Splashing and laughter are also heard near the empty pool. Seems their happy memories are here to last. The Devil's Tramping Ground is a barren, circular patch of land inside the woods of Chatham County, North Carolina. Legend says this is where the devil comes to dance. Not only does vegetation refuse to grow here, but animals will not set Paul inside the circle either, and anything left inside the circle will be thrown clear by morning. Apparently the devil doesn't like to share the dance floor. Please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications so you won't miss a thing. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. The Custer House inside Fort Abraham Lincoln was home to General Custer and his wife Libby from 1873 to 1876. Guests have reported many occurrences such as doors opening and closing, lights going on and off, cold spots, and disembodied voices. Libby's spirit still remains and has been seen wearing black mourning clothes as she still searches for her husband who lost his life at the Battle of Little Bighorn. The former governor's mansion in Bismarck is rumored to be haunted by the spirit of Governor Briggs who died in the master bedroom from tuberculosis in 1898. After the governor's death, the butler was convinced his spirit remained, and he refused to stay in the home alone. Over the years, the mansion has been restored, and with any good renovation comes the spirits of the home's past. Footsteps are heard on the basement stairs, and the curtains move when there is no breeze. Doors open and close on their own, and someone even recorded a spirit warning them not to go into the attic. Definitely wouldn't have to tell me twice. In Cleveland, the once glamorous four-story Franklin Castle has been plagued with deaths and alleged crimes throughout its history. To add to the spook factor, there are secret passages and creepy gargoyles keeping their eye on things in the home. When the original owner Hans Tiedemann and his family moved into the grand estate, members of the family started dying mysteriously. Could their beautiful home be cursed? 
After Tiedemann sold the home, it has changed hands often. Many haunted happenings occur here, including phantom organ music, ghost children, crying babies, and plenty of cold spots throughout. Might I suggest avoiding the woods if you visit Kirkland, Ohio. If you do venture into the wooded darkness, you might just come face to face with the melon heads. According to legend, these pale, sickly beings with sharp razor-like teeth and enormous heads were the result of the evil Dr. Crow experimenting on innocent little orphans left in his care. Eventually, the now deformed evil creatures had enough and killed the mad scientists and scattered into the woods, feeding on babies to survive. Though some people contest the melon heads are merely the ghosts of the mistreated children, or that they are more likely to run to safety and hide than attack anyone. But would you be willing to take the chance? The eye-catching Skirvin Hotel has a long and storied history that includes rowdy Prohibition era activities. One of the hotel's resident ghosts is that of former maid named Effie, who allegedly had an affair with the hotel's founder. When she became pregnant, he locked her away on the 10th floor. She became terribly lonely and depressed, and even after giving birth she wasn't allowed to leave, and ultimately committed suicide taking her infant with her. Numerous basketball teams stay at that hotel when in town, and have reported haunted happenings such as doors slamming, strange unexplainable sounds outside their rooms, and more than one player has reported being visited by an amorous female spirit through the night. The Stone Lion Inn was built for F. E. Holt and his rather large family, which included 12 children. Tragically, an 8-year-old daughter passed away from an overdose when the maid accidentally gave her the wrong medicine for whooping cough. But she stuck around and is known to enjoy playing with other children's toys and leaving them scattered about, gently stroking the faces of sleeping guests and even taking the occasional nap on one of the beds. Another spirit thought to be F.E. Holton himself has been reported by maids as the apparition of a man in an old-fashioned black suit wearing a top hat who creepily hangs out behind the heating system. But, despite the creep factor there, he is also quite the gentleman, helping staff and guests. He may have even been the spirit to help a guest turn out a light when she wasn't able to reach when she went to bed. The Hasita Head Lighthouse Keeper's home now runs as an interpretive center and bed and breakfast. The former lightkeeper's home is haunted by a gray lady named Rue who likes to make sure things are being done correctly. It's believed she is the spirit of a former keeper's wife who was quite bossy in life and once renovations started back in the 70s, she couldn't resist making her presence known. From the kitchen, footsteps can be heard coming up from the basement and dishes are heard rattling in the cupboards which, though securely shut, are sometimes found wide open by morning. Another story tells of a carpenter that was working in the attic, who she must have liked as he described the apparition of an angry old lady in a long, swishy skirt that floated inches off the floor coming straight for him. Needless to say, he made a hasty getaway. In the 1880s, the otherwise peaceful town of Lafayette was rocked by brutal murder. They found the man responsible was Richard Marple, and he was sentenced to hang. His grief-stricken mother, Anna, who everyone believed was a gypsy or a witch of sorts, was heard cursing the town and its people with threats of burning the town to the ground. Sure enough, the town soon suffered multiple disastrous fires. She must have been pleased with her work, as she is said to still haunt the local cemetery, and visitors have reported hearing the sounds of laughter and moaning following them. Eastern State Penitentiary, one of the most expensive and well-known prisons in the world, built in 1829. The massive prison was home to such notable criminals as Al Capone. Until the prison became overcrowded, inmates were kept in constant solitude, even having a hood placed over their heads by guards when they left their cells. Today, the deteriorated prison operates as a museum and offers ghost tours where guests have seen shadowy figures lurking about evil faces appearing on the walls, and heard phantom laughter and footsteps. Crumblethorpe was built as a family estate in 1744 by John Wister, but British General James Agnew made it his headquarters during the Battle of Germantown. During the battle, he was wounded and bled out in the front parlor where his bloodstains can still be seen. It's said that a black mist rises from the bloodstain and wanders about the house. 
Another spirit here is that of a former maid named Justina, who fell victim to the yellow fever. Belcourt Castle in Newport is quite haunted. Inside the chapel is the statue of a monk that was once placed near the stairs. Even though the statue has been moved, it seems there is a ghost of a monk that still hangs out by the stairs. Inside the castle's gothic ballroom, there is a haunted suit of armor whose former owner's screams can still be heard. And there are a pair of chairs that somehow manage to thwart people's attempts to have a seat. The legend of Mercy Brown isn't purely fiction. At the time of her death in 1892, the area was in the midst of a vampire panic, and her cremated heart was force-fed to her ailing brother, as they thought it would cure him of vampirism that was taking over his body. But in reality, she wasn't a vampire and merely died because of tuberculosis, which had previously taken the life of her mother and her sister. Rather than be logical about it, the town folks were certain it was vampirism in action. To end the curse, they dug up her body, receiving proof she was a vampire because her body was well preserved. They took her liver and heart, burnt them so she couldn't return, and fed them to her brother, who ended up dying months later anyhow. Rumor has that she still haunts the Exeter Cemetery to this day. The Battery Carriage House Inn is claimed to be the most haunted home in the entire state. The massive manor has been around a long time and seen its fair share of action in the day. The spirits of the inn were reawakened when Hurricane Hugo swept through and became even more active during the renovations afterward. Ghosts reported here include the headless torso of a man who was likely a pirate who met his faith nearby, a misty figure of a gentleman spirit, and a group of ghosts who appear as orbs of light that have been seen in rooms and roaming the halls. Though the torso spirit may come off in a menacing manner, he's never attacked. Mainly guests get the creepy sensation of being watched. The Blue Lady can be seen at an old lighthouse on Hilton Head Island. She is believed to be the spirit of a young girl named Caroline. During a hurricane in 1898, her father, the lightkeeper, drowned in a storm, and the determined girl did her best to keep the light lit, but also met her fate in nature's fury. Since that fateful day, she has been spotted wearing a blue dress searching for her father and if you drive by, you're likely to hear her crying. She is still trying to keep others safe though and has often been spotted before a hurricane strikes. In closing, we hope you enjoyed today's episode. Stay tuned for the final part of our five-part series of haunts and legends from every state, coming soon. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Greybeard's Jewels. And don't forget the podcast. Bye.